The Porsche Cayenne, a statement. Credit crunch worries? Not me. And an on-road performance other SUVs can only dream of. A dinosaur like the Mercedes G-Class just can't keep up with the Cayenne on tarmac. But what about off-road? Without solid tarmac under its wheels? Is it a lazy compromise, more of a wannabe than a true off-road vehicle? 4x4 will find out if the KN is capable of going where the G leads. Most SUVs do around 210 km per hour maximum, but not the Cayenne. The V8 gives a top speed of up to 242 km an hour. This SUV is made for the fast lane. Off-road, however, the G is the one to live up to. Gear reduction, three 100% locks, rigid axles. Will the Porsche keep up with the Merc? Shame the Cayenne is so incredibly expensive. An air suspension system is the result of getting to grips with the on-road, off-road balancing act. The Cayenne is lifted up to more than 20 centimeters ground clearance. That's almost 7 centimeters higher than the G. On paper, our Cayenne is a true cross-country vehicle with center and rear diff locks, gear reducer, reinforced underbody protection, and selectable anti-roll bar for the maximum articulation and maximum comfort. First challenge, wading depth. The G starts to choke at 50 centimeters, the Cayenne makes it up to 55. Ignoring the specified wading depth means the engine might take in water instead of air, meaning hydraulic shock and total damage, which in the case of an eight-cylinder Porsche will set you back a few bob or two. Killing gradient. How steep a slope can I go up? Approached from ground level before I damage my front or rear bumper. The Mercedes has shorter overhangs, so it has a bit more room to maneuver here. The Cayenne has done well so far. It has followed with effortless confidence where the G has led. That's also down to the tires, of course. The Cayenne's cross-country tires definitely give it the edge over the G here. The scary part, the steep incline. Engage all three locks and up we go. It's too slippery. The tires get bogged down. Without traction, even three locks don't help.
And now it's the Porsche's turn. The 100% locking central diff locks engaged on the rear, gear reduction of course, and off we go. The Cayenne even makes it a tiny bit further up the slope than the G. Even if that's probably mainly down to the tires, hats off to the Cayenne. On-road it compares favorably enough with most ordinary cars and off-road it's definitely no windbag. Even without the optional off-road package, it performs quite well cross-country. If most Cayenne drivers were actually aware of what their car can do.